Hey everybody, uh, welcome to the KX Country Clubhouse Talk here from the KX 94.7 Morning Ride. Go Leafs, go. But here I am with our good friend, Canadian country superstar, Mr. Brett Kissel. Hey, buddy. I'm great. You forgot to say, instead of Canadian country artist, you're a huge Oilers fan. If you're going to say go Leafs, go, I'm allowed to say go Oilers, go. All right. Well, we've, we've got some hockey to talk about a little later on. But uh, first things first, I've been following you, obviously, on social media. You're a crazy man on social media. But... You need to ex explain to the keyboard cowards out there why you had a Pittsburgh jersey on while singing the national anthem against the Montreal Canadiens the other night. Oh, boy, did it ever, uh, <laughs> you know, create a bit of a war on Twitter. And yes, you know what, uh, and, and, and I get it, too. I, I hold no ill will towards anybody who was mad at me because if you thought about it, why would a Canadian artist for a Canadian game for the Montreal right. Canadiens and the Pittsburgh Penguins wear the American jersey. Right. And then everybody also knows that I'm a huge Oilers fan. Oilers fan. Now, exactly. it's a free country. and I can cheer for who he wants to cheer for. But this was um, a rebroadcast of my anthem. And I'm very thankful for the exposure, you know, in the National Hockey League and Hockey Night in Canada. But I was brought in by the Pittsburgh Penguins uh, earlier this year, uh, yeah, earlier in the season, yeah. to do uh, an anthem for them on their uh, Canadian night, their bilingual night. <laughs> so I was honored that I was brought in as a Canadian artist to sing right. the Canadian anthem in both official languages. And they saved that anthem and they just played it last night. Well, here's the thing that the NHL didn't realize is that in Canada, we are so passionate about our teams and yeah. everyone in Quebec was so mad so I mad that I was wearing a Penns jersey and a Crosby jersey. Ooh. And then everyone in Alberta was so mad that I'm wearing a Penns jersey when I'm supposed to be only cheering for the Oilers, the Oilers. that I was trending on Twitter because everyone's mad at Brett Kissel. Some guys will do anything for exposure, young man. Well played. Uh, hey, you <laughs> I'm kidding, He's, man. That, was that, just... that is the stuff. If, if I was in Hollywood, I would say, yeah, isn't this great? We created a scandal. <laughs> but two things here, and you know this because you and I love hockey, yeah. you know, more than most. Um, one, you don't mess with the anthem. Two, just no. don't mess with it. You know what? I understand. And I'm saying like the lyrics. I'm saying, and for me as an artist, you go in, you do your job, you sing, you sing the song, you sing it well, get off the ice, drop the puck. In and out. Yeah, get the hot. game on. But you also don't mess with someone's sports team, which is why everyone That's in Edmonton sacrilege. and in Quebec was so <laughs> mad. But I explained it. I said yeah. it was a rerun. I didn't know. I still love the Oilers. Well, and you know what? I'm still a Canadian guy through and through. Of course you are. Here's another thing, Toph. Answer me this. A lot of people who love the Leafs, you know, obviously don't like the Penguins and can't stand the Bruins. And, sure. and I get it. I get the rivalries. But if Sidney Crosby – gives you a jersey as a buddy and says, hey, do you mind wearing my sweater for the anthem? Do you do it? Like if Bobby Orr comes up to you and has a beer with you, Toph, and says, yep. here's a signed jersey, let's get a picture. Do you put on the black and gold top for Bobby Orr? Or it's a hard say, yes. Sorry, it's a, Bobby. No. <laughs> it's a hard yes. I think it's interesting that you had no idea what was going on. And Jordan, was it Jordan Eberle that called you? Yeah. Yeah, well, he and I were FaceTiming literally about an hour before the game. Right. And we're just chatting. I was telling him about, you know, some of the things that I've been doing. And we, we, we talk all the time. He says, so are you doing any anthems for Edmonton? And I said, no, I've, I've chatted with the organization at great length. And we're going to figure out something. But no, nothing, no anthems. Okay, okay cool. So then after I do the anthem in Pittsburgh, he <laughs> says, what's going on, man? Like, why, why are you dodging me like this? I thought we were friends. And I said, what are you talking about? And he said, you just did the anthem for the Penguins in a Crosby jersey. I said, oh, my God. It must have been a rerun. And then, yeah, I, I watch it. I watch it on, uh, at a DVR. And I was, oh, yeah, created a storm, buddy. Oh, well, this has passed. So all is good in the hood. We'll talk a little bit more hockey. Let's talk about some music right now. Uh, I also noticed on your, uh, your Instagram, the, you've upped your drive-in concert series to the is it Baltac Boat Concert? What the hell was that? That looked like a party. It, it was amazing. You know what? It was a plan that we had for uh, at least a couple of weeks. 
And like everything in this, in this era, we had to make sure we went through the proper channels. So we spoke with BC Health, right. the province of British Columbia, Health Canada once again, and then obviously the municipal government, local government, and needed to make sure the RCMP were aware of what we wanted sure. to do. So in doing so, we, we did it, and, and I'm so grateful for how it turned out. We were going to advertise it sooner, but weather was a bit of a factor, and we didn't know what we were going to get. So on Sunday morning, I got on Instagram, and I said, hey, this is the site. I'm in Invermere right now, which is a wonderful holiday spot in BC for many people in, in the province as well as in Alberta that come over. And I'm going to do a drive-in style concert from your boat so here's the cliff and the the yard i'm going to be on with the band and a sound system and we'll fm transmitter and the whole nine yards and we'll see at eight o'clock we'll talk we had three thousand people come out and you know all socially distant we figured out a way to bring people together but do it properly everybody properly. behaved everybody followed the rules and regulations of the rcmp and it was extraordinary. And I'm so thankful that we were able to pull it off and raise money for charity. Nicely done. Well, you're the front runner when it comes to this stuff. You basically started the drive-in concerts here in Canada. Now you got the boat thing. I know there's people already looking at this for next year, guaranteed. Well, it, it was something that we'd, we'd love to do again because it was so fun. Now let's yeah. pretend COVID-19 never happened. I don't know why I haven't done a boat concert like this before, why I don't take the key to Bala and take it outside and 100%. do something in Muskoka, uh, do something in Kelowna, yeah. um, you know, fi figure out something really cool to do. So it really got my creative juices flowing and, and my brain spinning. So I'm very proud of the outcome. I, I still can't believe there are that many people. No, the, the photos look amazing. Folks, if you haven't seen it, check out BK's uh, Facebook and Instagram. It's unbelievable. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the CCMA as you're up for a boatload of those, speaking of which, including Fans Choice and the Big One Entertainer of the Year. Congratulations, young man. Well, thank you. Yeah, very exciting. You know, getting that type of recognition from, from the industry, and I've, you know, formed so many great friendships. Uh, well, you look at you and I, you and, I and, yeah. and how close we've become over the years and, and stuff like that, and these are awards that are voted on by the industry. And so I'm very grateful to get these nods and come what may in September when they're handing out the trophies, just knowing that I'm in the same category of a lot of guys that I've looked up to for years or a lot of guys that have been real good to me over the years and our buddies. I think it's really special. Cool. You want to kind of explain how people go about voting for fans choice? Yeah, of course. You know what? This is the most unique award of the night without question, yeah. because it's voted on solely by the fans. fans. So you need to go to this website, ccmafanvote.com. And you've got 10 choices and all of them are great. And so if you do happen to scroll over my name, Brett Kissel, and click on a vote, uh, you know, it'd be pretty fun because it's like the Stanley <laughs> Cup in this business. So we'll have a Stanley Cup style party for everybody who does vote for me. I noticed that uh, your commander, Mr. Steve Cody, is also up for industry person of the year. Um, aside from Jameson Whiskey, uh, how's it been working with Steve Cody over the years in Warner Music Canada? You know what? I'm very happy to get a chance to talk about that. I, I don't really get a, an opportunity because he's one of the great captains of, of my ship who works tirelessly be, behind the scenes. And, you know, for years now, not only have we formed such a great friendship, but he's also uh, been an incredible guy to help guide uh, my, my way, you know, in this business. And working radio is, is not, an, it, not an easy job. Of course, he makes it look fun and his relationships are extremely strong. But He's guided us to a number of songs that have gone top 10, two songs that have gone to the number one spot in Airwaves a few years ago, now Drink About Me a couple of months back. And this record, Now or Never, is very much a testament to his work uh, you know, in A&R, which means helping out, figuring out what songs are going to be there. And the guy's just a beauty. In Toronto, this is, you know, this is how you can tell he's a good guy. <laughs> lives in Toronto for the last 30 years mm -hmm. and is an unapologetic Bruins fan. And yet I, oh, everybody, <laughs> everybody in Leafs Nation still loves the guy. That's how good sure. of a guy he is. I agree. Um, speaking of next tunes coming forth, I see that A Few Good Stories is going to be serviced up September 11th. Can you tell us a bit about the song and maybe the timing? I know it's 9-11. It's is there any significance to that? No, you know what, 9-11 is, is something that, that everybody's going to talk about and feel, you know, for 
till the end of time, really. It, it's such a, such a tragedy um, for the world and for the people in the United States. Um, but at the same time, if there's anything that I've, I've learned from people that I've met that have been involved in the tragedy or family members you know, that have lost loved ones uh, in the Twin Towers, they look back on some of the best days that they've had with their family members and they look back with a lot of fond memories. And if there's anything I've learned in losing people in my life, it's you need to cherish the good ones, forget about the bad ones real quick. Now, a few good stories to tell, although it doesn't have a, uh, you know, a sentimental feel when it comes to the story uh, of 9-11 uh, back in 2001, what it does have is a feel-good atmosphere, a great beat, and lyrics that I live by every single day. Um, I'm going to soak up the sun, keep the wind in my sails. I'm going to try to get to heaven while I raise a little hell. And like, that is so you. That's all I can hope for. I mean, it's it's one of my favorites that I've ever recorded and for sure one of my favorites on the record. Cool, man. Uh, We could probably talk all day about hockey, but we'll get you out of here on some hockey talk if that's okay with you. Yeah, of course. And we'll even include the Bruins because of Commander Cody. Uh, let's start with the Oilers, though, and uh, how you think they're, they're going to fare. Started out on a shaky foot, I'll be honest with you, and I think you as an Oilers fan have to admit it was like, oh boy, here we go, what's going on? Well, there's a lot of people worried in oil country, that, that's for sure, because yeah. I, I think we, we thought that we had this one sewn up. Uh, we've got a great young team. We've got yeah. a lot of superstars, not just McDavid and Dreisaitl, but Nugent Hopkins and James Neal and, you know, two really great goalies and Mike Smith and, and Miko Koskinen, and yet all of a sudden, we're down five to two, and we're showing, showing no signs of coming back. But I'll tell you this. I choose to look on the bright side. And, of course, we won the next game. We won yep. last night uh, um, or the other night. What, what's great here is that we learned that lesson in game one, how tragic it would for have sure. been for an Oilers fan to have, you know, stop playing hockey and have a disastrous game in game five of the best of five or in game seven of a best of seven. So if you're going to learn these lessons and make sure it never happens again, that's the time to do it. Early, right? And did you see Connor McDavid in his, in his interviews um, after the game and also during the second game against Chicago, he looked mad. Yeah. So mad. And I loved it. (laughs) He was, well, obviously we played an awful game. We're not, we're not going to let that happen again. When you're frowning and scowling like that, he, he won the game for the Edmonton Oilers. And I think he's going to win the cup for us. You heard it okay. here first. All right. He's Watch worked. on tape. With their, they're yeah. going to win the cup. So does it matter that we talk about the Bruins series with, uh, with Boston at all? <laughs> you know what? We, I, I'll talk Bruins for sure. I mean, they're, they're all going to see what, you know, what, what the seed is going to be and, who they're going to play. Boston is a team this playoffs that is not worried. They're not worried about anybody or any opponent that, that they're going to face. Um, uh, for me, I want to see some redemption for, for the Leafs. And I want to see the Leafs go as far as they possibly can, truthfully. Uh, okay. One of my best friends is Jordan Eberle on, on the Islanders. I want to see the Islanders do well. But I really want to see for Leafs Nation and, and that the adversity that they've had. Like, why not? I was going to bring up the Leafs, Blue Jackets. They're going to try and uh, even the series tonight. They play actually in a couple hours, so uh, sticks on the ice for that one. What about the Canucks in the wild? You know what? Unless you're a Canucks fan, I mean, because not a lot of people really cheer for the wild other than in Minnesota, but that's a bit of a sleeper series that I still am going to have my my eyes out for because Vancouver is a very young team, and no one would have thought that they would have been able to accomplish what they did this year. And only a few points separate these guys. So it's going to be a great series. And that's one of those teams. Like the Wild is a very defensive team, yet they've got scoring power that can go out there and make you pay. Oh, yeah. Yet the Canucks have a lot of young firepower. So it's going to be an interesting matchup. Everyone in Canada wants me to say, go Canucks, go. But uh, a lot of <laughs> Vancouver-based artists like Washboard Union and JoJo Mason know that on a scale of one to 10 for how much I care for the flames yeah. or the Canucks, it's about yeah. a negative 10. So, <laughs> so you're pulling you know for the what? Jets then too. Okay. You're pulling for Winnipeg. Yeah. Well, I'm definitely <laughs> pulling for, I'm yeah, you gotta, I, I am That's pulling for the Jets for sure. There's, right. it's, it's just one of those things that for, for the, for the fans in Vancouver who are, they're never going to spin my music again. But <laughs> what, what I believe is this, I would actually love the Canucks to win at least a series or two 
so that we can have an old school, uh, you know, division uh, matchup with the Oilers and the Canucks. Or I would even, in some ways, if the Flames won and we had a battle of Alberta, could you imagine? Yeah, that like, would be a cooker. That would be a cooker. Oh. And then last but not least, Habs and uh, the Penguins. I hate to go back there again, but it's all tied up at one right now. Uh, Mr. Pittsburgh Penguins <laughs> jersey wearing. Well, yeah. It's, it's, I'm bugging your ass. Here's the thing. Is that the Penguins are built for playoff hockey? They are, and I don't think good. the parents could care. Uh, the Penguins could care less um, where where they are. Uh, the seed. It's a to me. It's a great advantage to be in the playing round because you're playing do or die hockey immediately. Um, you watch Dallas and Vegas play, and it's a five three game, but there wasn't a lot of jump to me right, or a lot right. of urgency for the stars because the games are meaningful, but they're meaningless all in the same. Whereas you're going to get a very hungry Canadians team, but I just don't think they've got what it takes. It's, they're to setting up Carey Price. They're, they're, they're basically hoping Carey Price can, can continue to stand on his head, right? So Yeah. Anyway, well, this is sounding more like Hockey Night in Canada than a Zoom. <laughs> it's always fun, right? Well, why don't you and I do, uh, do regular scheduled uh, uh, hockey You know talk. it's coming. Yeah. <laughs> well, check this out. I got an idea for you, Todd. Why right, don't man. you... Um, be like the mediator, the moderator of a, of a connected Zoom call. So we got to get you in, in on this technology. I know you don't like Zoom, but let's do it. Okay. You, me, uh, man, uh, who, uh, there's, everybody loves hockey. Andrew Hyatt loves hockey. Hi, you get Dallas there. Smith. You could get uh, – and, and for a half an hour, we okay. evaluate the games. Just like, just like David Amber or Ron McClain, <laughs> Kelly Rudy, Cassie Campbell, and Elliot. Why okay, don't we do Toff? Brett, Dallas, and uh, and George Canyon, or something like that. Okay, well, if you do Elliot Friedman, can you grow your beard out like that too, please? Uh, hey, <laughs> Elliot better be careful. The Washboard Union is going to call Elliot Friedman and say, "Hey, Back why don't up. you join our band?" <laughs> Brett Kessel, always a pleasure. Thank you for being in the KX Country Clubhouse, my friend. Uh, good luck at the CCMAs. It's a bummer that you're not going to be able to be here this year, as we were supposed to be in Hamilton, but. Uh, Regardless, we will uh, we will hoist a big one, okay, my friend? Well, thanks, buddy. Yeah, we'll make up for lost time. I promise you that. And I can't wait to see you soon. Thanks for this. Right.